the manga for Attack on Titan was published from 2009 to 2021 and shows the battle between mankind and the Titans, with strong and capable characters on both sides. Some showed their power through their Titan forms, while others were only human but no less powerful than the Titans. Which character do you think would be the strongest of all in a one-on-one -on -one fight? We found the results of a survey asking this question that received over 70,000 responses. In this video, I'd like to share with you this ranking of the strongest characters in Attack on Titan. Please be aware, if you haven't watched the final season part two of the anime, this video may contain spoilers. Number 10, Peak Finger. Peak Finger was a Marleyan warrior who was the inheritor to the Cart Titan. Peak is known for her lazy behavior and laid back attitude, but she's mostly known for her calm decision making and intelligence. Peak's cart titan walks around on its hands and legs and is usually always together with the beast titan. At first, such a strange looking titan was off putting for a lot of readers. The cart titan isn't suited for direct combat and usually wouldn't attack by itself in a battle but would instead play a more supportive role, transporting things and people around. When it comes to attacking, these titans are far from the strongest, but they can mount a gun on their back for other soldiers to use. Where this titan truly shines is in its endurance. It's the only titan that can stay in titan form for months at a time. Transforming and staying transformed is the easiest to do as a cart titan. So, in a long, drawn-out battle, this titan could be the strongest. Number 9. Reiner Braun The immortal Reiner Braun, who has the power of the armored titan, was the one who tackled his way through the gate early in the story and let a large amount of titans invade Walmaria. As the name would suggest, the armored titan is covered in an armor-like plate of hardening. It can use its strong exterior, both offensively, like we see when it tackles the gate, or defensively, because early in the story, it was able to ignore all attacks to the nape of its neck. Usually a Titan's weak point, when the 104th class of cadets was graduating, Reiner was ranked second after Mikasa. He was praised by instructor Keith Shaddis as a man with strong physique and mental strength who's trusted by his peers. Up until the point where his true identity is revealed to us, Reiner was seen as a pretty cool, confident guy. But this opinion of him definitely changed after we learned who he really was. Reiner was a warrior who was sent into the walls by Marley as a part of their mission to recapture the founding Titan. However, the soldier personality that he developed during his time as a member of the 104th class of cadets and as a scout started to interfere with his mental stability. He was so unstable that even Bertolt was starting to have trouble trusting him. After seeing how crazy he was, Japanese fans ended up giving him the nickname Minheraina, which combines Raina, the Japanese pronunciation for Reiner, with Minhera which is used to describe characters that have mental health issues or are emotionally unstable. As the story progresses, his armor, which is the whole point of his titan, turns out to be a lot more fragile than we thought at first and is broken many times. Because of this, it's hard to call him one of the strongest characters, but a lot of people factored in that he was basically immortal because he couldn't die even though he wanted to which is why he's on this list. So, the plot armor type is loved not only by the author, but by readers too. Number eight, Porco Galliard. Porco Galliard is a Marleyan warrior who inherits the jaw type from Ymir. Porco only shows up in a few battles starting from the Marley arc, but when Aaron and the scouts attack Liberio, he took part in the battle as the jaw type. During this battle, he showcased his skills to Mikasa, who recognized he was on a completely different level from Ymir's type. He took Eren by surprise from behind and fought him in close combat, taking advantage of the agility that's given to the smaller jaw type. 
The Jaw Titan's fangs and claws are exceptionally powerful, easily shattering the hardened defenses of other Titans. Aaron notices this, and so after he defeats Porco, he uses his jaw to kill Laura Tiber, the Warhammer Titan, straight through the hardened crystal she'd placed herself in. Since the Jaw Titan could pierce through even the Warhammer Titan's defenses, it would easily be able to shatter Reiner's armor. A lot of people respected the offensive power Porco had as a Jaw Titan, and some think that he should be able to take out the nape of a Titan with a single swipe. Number 7. Annie Leonhardt Annie is another one of the Marleyan warriors who inherited the female Titan and was sent from Marley to Parody Island along with Reiner and Bertolt. She's a cool beauty who, like Aaron, scored very well in the 104th class of cadets, coming in fourth place. Ever since she was little, she was thoroughly trained in martial arts by her father and had such a high level of skill that not even Reiner or Aaron could compete with her. Annie is the heir to the female Titan, which is also the fourth intelligent Titan we're introduced to, after Bertolt's Colossal Titan, Reiner's Armor Titan, and Aaron's Attack Titan. However, unlike Reiner and Bertolt, whose main goal was to break through the walls and the gate, Annie was the first intelligent Titan to attack Aaron. At that point, I'm sure many fans felt like things were hopeless because of the female Titan's overwhelming combat abilities. The female Titan's strength include its high mobility and versatility, as well as being a great fighter because Annie was the heir, along with the ability to harden. Although its range isn't large, the female Titan can also summon the pure Titans. It also has some of the highest utility because another thing that makes the female Titan special is its ability to use some of the powers from the other Titans. Annie's unique combat abilities, in addition to the female Titan's powers, definitely earned her a spot on this list. One thing that increased her ranking was the fact that she had taken on two Ackermans, Levi and Mikasa, in the Forest of Giant Trees. Number 6. Zeke Jaeger, the heir to the Beast Titan. Zeke Jaeger was the son of Grisha Jaeger and so the half-brother of the protagonist Aaron. After inheriting the Beast Titan, he became the war chief of the Marleyan Warriors unit, which contains six of the nine Titans. Zeke first appears as the Beast Titan somewhere in the middle of the story. The sudden appearance of this talking Titan shocked readers with a new sense of doom and hopelessness. In his human form, Zeke wasn't very strong, but his abilities as a Beast Titan are definitely worth noting. Once he transforms, his skill in pitching as a human becomes a powerful stone-throwing attack, taking advantage of his long limbs. Using this, he nearly wiped out the scouts when they were trying to retake Walmaria. Readers thought that this skill alone was enough to put him this high on the list. Some people think that if he wasn't restricted to a specific location, he could win battles simply by throwing rocks from a distance and retreating when necessary. However, while this stone-throwing tactic might seem invincible, it will inevitably fail if there's nothing left around him for him to throw anymore. That sense of doom he gave the readers when he first appeared in the story gradually faded as more characters, like the Warhammer Titan, were introduced in the Marley arc. Also, Zeke is completely helpless in a fight against Levi. But you could say that about almost anyone who fights an Ackerman. Number 5. Mikasa Ackerman Mikasa is a childhood friend of the protagonist Aaron and Armin, and is the main heroine in the story. When they were children, Aaron saved her life, and eventually she kind of became a yandere with an unusual degree of attachment to Aaron. With her outstanding physical abilities, Mikasa graduated at the very top of her class during her time as a training cadet. She's unusually calm, quiet, and doesn't show her emotions, unless it comes to Aaron. Then she loses her composure and reveals them completely. Because of this, a lot of people think that Mikasa's relationship with Aaron is what makes her so strong. Mikasa can't transform into a titan, but her mother was from the Asian clan 
and her father was a member of a branch of the Ackerman family, so she's part of the Ackerman bloodline. It's unclear whether the potency of the blood has anything to do with the level of strength an Ackerman has. Number 4. Armin Arlert Armin Arlert is the heir to the Colossal Titan. He's also a childhood friend of Eren, and plays an important role in many strategies in the story. Physically, he's not very strong, and he's an introvert, but he has a very strong sense of curiosity, and is the type who never gives up. The operation to recapture Wall Maria in the middle of the story was a major turning point for Armin. This is where he inherits the Colossal Titan in order to revive himself from all the burns he suffered during a battle with the enemy. The Colossal Titan has a gigantic body that's about 60 meters tall, far exceeding the size of a normal Titan. Its body can also emit hot steam and use this as a means of defense against attacks to the nape of its neck. On top of this, the blast it can create when transforming into a Titan can be so tremendous that this is without a doubt the single most powerful attack in Attack on Titan. For most people, whether they're in a Titan or not, if you're too close to the Colossal Titan when it chooses to blow up, you are done for. But the Colossal Titan does have weaknesses once it's transformed, like its slow movement and high energy costs that stops the Inheritor from staying in this form too long. Armin does his best to make up for what he lacks physically with his strategies. So, how well he does in a fight depends on the strategy he's using. Number 3. Bertolt Hoover Bertolt is the heir of the Colossal Titan that appears in the beginning of the first chapter, and is another Marleyan warrior, the same as Reiner and Annie, that was sent to Paradis Island. He was one of the best students in Eren's 104th class of cadets, skilled enough to make it in the top three. However, he doesn't stand out much early in the series because he's always standing behind Reiner. Bertolt's identity as the Colossal Titan that he had worked so hard to keep secret also gets exposed by Reiner, which was another way we could see he was always being led around by him. How strong he really is is still a mystery because he was always hiding in the shadow of Reiner. Early on in the story, Reiner proudly takes second place in the 104th class of cadets, and Bertolt came in third. But it turns out that when they were Marley and Warrior candidates, Reiner could never keep up with Bertolt and was always lagging behind. So Bertolt was definitely hiding his true strength when he was in the cadets, and still came out in the top three in their class. We also find out later that he had mastered the powers of the Colossal Titan right after inheriting it. If Bertolt were to go all out, at the very least, Reiner's armor would be completely shattered. And based on the fact that instructor Keith Shaddis praised him for having strong potential during their time in the cadets, he was definitely more than he appeared to be. Although in the middle of the story, Bertolt is outsmarted by Armin's plan to sacrifice himself, people think that if the battle were to be one-on-one, -on -one, Bertolt's Colossal Titan would definitely win against Armin's. Number 2. Aaron Jaeger Aaron Jaeger is the protagonist of the story and wasn't very strong in the beginning. When Armin would be getting bullied, Aaron would go to rescue him, but he'd only be saved because Mikasa would also come. When he was a cadet, he even got beat up by Annie. So as a young boy, he wasn't particularly strong. The question is, when did Aaron start being viewed as strong by the readers? I think readers might have started to feel this way when he first transformed into a Titan. Each of the nine Titans has its own abilities, and Aaron had two of the nine Titans, the Attack Titan and the Founding Titan. When Aaron first transformed into a Titan, though, he wasn't able to fully demonstrate his abilities, and we as the readers didn't even know exactly what his abilities were. Aaron really started to show his strength only in the Marley arc. Here, he successfully defeats the Warhammer Titan and inherits its abilities. The Warhammer Titan's abilities included being able to create weapons and armor with its hardening, and being able to control its Titan remotely instead of in the nape of the neck. Many people thought that the choice between Aaron and Levi for number one 
would depend on whether or not he could use all the Warhammer Titan's abilities, proving how powerful this Titan was. The weakness of the Warhammer Titan is that it becomes exhausted easily, similar to the Colossal Titan, so it wouldn't be much use in a long-term battle. Later on in the story, Eren transforms with the power of the Founding Titan into a ridiculously large Titan. Most people think he would definitely be number one on this list if he could use the full power of the Founding Titan. Number one, Levi Ackerman. Who else did you think would be here? The top-ranked character was by far none other than Levi Ackerman. Both Levi and Eren, who came in second place in this ranking, have different strengths and weaknesses that made it hard to decide who was the strongest of the two. So, voters must have had a tough time deciding. As a child, Levi was taken in by his uncle, Kenny Ackerman, who taught him how to fight as a means of survival. He had such outstanding physical abilities that he was recruited by Commander Erwin from the slums. Eventually, he became a captain of the scouts and led his own soldiers. It's said that Levi alone has the military strength of a whole brigade, and this extraordinary strength isn't even matched by most of the Nine Titans. The source of his power lies in his blood, because he's a member of the main branch of the Ackerman family. A lot of readers claim that the thought of Levi losing a 1v1 is unimaginable, and so he's definitely at the top of this list. But even though Levi is easily the strongest man alive, he's still just a man. So some people think that he's not as strong as the Nine Titans. Because regardless of how strong Levi is, that blast from the Colossal Titan would kill him, while some of the Nine Titans would be able to survive. Others say that maybe if it was before the Marley arc, they could see it happening. But if we're talking about Eren after that, then no matter how well-prepared Levi is, he still wouldn't be able to beat Eren. In the story, Levi is shown completely dominating against the Beast Titan and the Female Titan. But I'm curious what would happen if he ever got into a fight with some of the other nine Titans. That's all for this one. Did all the characters you expect make the list? Each character had a variety of unique strengths so much so that opinions differed greatly depending on where they fight and who they were fighting against. If you have your own ranking, please let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again in the next video.